In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the no-load operation of single phase transformer. So for that, let us consider a two-winding transformer where I have taken uh, this side. That means one one dash as the uh, input side, okay, and two two dash as the uh, secondary side. All right. Now what I have done, I have connected a single phase AC supply to this primary side, and I have not connected any load to the secondary side. Okay. So let us see how this transformer is going to behave and what is the phase diagram during no load condition. Okay, now when you connect a supply voltage which is having magnitude V1, it is continuously varying with respect to time. Okay, what will happen? Even though the load is there is no load connected, uh, it will draw some amount of current. Okay, a small current will be drawn by the transformer. I will mark this as I0, where this I0 is the no load current. No load current. It is around three to five percentage of the rated current. It is very small value. Now, what is the use of this I zero? Okay. Now, when you when you connect the supply to this input current, input part of the transformer, and this is sinusoidal. This current will also sinusoidal in nature, but it is lagging behind this input voltage. When this current flow through this winding. And it completes path through this because this is a closed circuit. And when a current flow through a conductor, what will happen? A magnetic field will set up around the conductor. Okay. So with the help of right hand thumb rule, I can define the direction of this flux. Okay. If I uh, keep my four fingers in the direction of current, the thumb indicates the direction of flux. So based on that, let me mark the direction of flux, and it will complete the flux will complete a path through this magnetic core. And this direction, in this particular direction. Okay, fine. So this I have marked as phi m. So I can write phi m is the main field. Okay. So which is the field? This current is sinusoidal in nature or continuously varying with respect to time. This flux will also sinusoidal in nature or it is also continuously varying with respect to time. Now, uh, with respect to these conductors, these conductors experience the change of magnetic field, rate of change of flux. Okay, so these conductors experience a change of rate of change of flux, and according to the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, an EMF will get induced in the primary side. That is E1, and also, okay, so E1 is the self-induced EMF because uh, the EMF which is induced in the primary because of the change of current, its own current, right? So even it's a self-induced EMF. Now you can see this end, uh, secondary winding, which is having n to number of turns. Okay, this is also experiencing a change, rate of change of magnetic flux. All right. Now because of that, an EMF will get induced in the secondary side also. But this E2 is called mutually induced EMF because this is the EMF induced in the secondary winding due to the change of flux which is produced by the current which is there in the primary winding. This I zero is having two components. First one is I mu, and second one is I C. Okay, I mu is the magnetizing component of this no load current, set, which is used to set up this magnetic flux phi m. Okay, so this phi m is due to this I m. All right. Now I C. I C is the core loss component because of this varying flux which is set up in this core. It two losses as the associated with this core. That is. Hysteresis loss and eddy current loss, and this no load current has to supply this I mu and I C. Okay, fine. So I can write I zero is the vector sum of I mu and I C. All right. Now, if you draw the phase diagram during no load condition, how it will be? So let me draw first. Let me draw this V one. Okay. This magnetizing current I mu exactly in ninety degree with the input voltage. So this is my I mu and the flux which is developed phi m which is in phase with this I m I mu okay and this core loss component I C which is in phase with the voltage okay so this is I C all right and then if I take the vector sum of these two you will get the no load current I zero which makes an angle between this V one that is phi zero okay all right. Now phi zero is the or cos phi zero is the no load power factor. Now because of the change in flux, what will happen? An EMF will get induced. Okay, E one and E two both will develop, which is 
180 degree face apart with respect to V1. The EM of induced in the primary winding will oppose the course. What is the course of this I0? What is the course of this I0 because of the supply voltage P1? This E1 and E2, okay, this E1 and E2, uh, which is 180 degree, which is opposing, okay, which is opposing the input voltage, okay. And E1, E2 will come in, in phase and magnitude will be different with, with respect to stepping up the voltage or stepping down the voltage. Now, this is the phasor diagram during no load operation. Now, you can see this makes an angle phi 0. If I write, if I consider this right angle triangle, okay, and if I write cos phi 0, okay, if I write cos phi 0, it is adjacent side divided by hypotenuse, which is I0. I can write IC equal to I0 cos phi 0. Okay, similarly, if I write this is equation 1 and if I write sin phi 0 which is equal to opposite side which is nothing but I mu. Okay, opposite side I mu which is uh, similar to here. Okay, so I mu divided by hypotenuse with this I0. So, I can write I mu is equal to I0 sin phi 0. Alright. Now, you can see uh, always this I mu will be greater than I C. That means the no load power factor will always poor. That means poor no load power factor. Okay, single phase transform is having poor no load power factor. The core loss. Okay, so I can write the core loss W0 equal to V0 I0 into cos phi 0. Okay, the voltage, no load voltage, no load current and the cosine of the angle between these two. Okay, so this is V0 I0 cos phi. This is called iron loss or core loss. Okay. So, this is all about the uh, no load operation of a single phase transformer.